Today, I present to you soft particle blasting. As a prerequisite, a table of decent size is necessary. Furthermore, the application consists of the following. Fume hood with a preliminary filter mat placed inside, air blaster with two chambers, compressor, mobile extraction and filter unit, as well as all required tubes. In addition, a compressed air pistol makes sense for scrubbing the blasting material. Now start with plugging in all the devices. Connect the fume hood and extraction unit with the black tubes. Finally, continue with the air blaster by connecting this to the compressor by using the pressure tubes. Make sure to use a suitable compressor. In fact, the compressor must be free from water and needs to consist of an oil separator. In order to connect the air blaster with a compressed air pistol, you need to have a Y fitting. This connects the spiral tube with the compressed air pistol and the pressure tube. For the blasting material, we use Arbacel B, Arbacel A, wheat starch, microcrystalline cellulose, and polyester fibers. With the help of the scanning electron microscope, the differences become clearly visible and allow for conclusions regarding the cleansing. The long fibers of the arbocells gently clean nearly all surfaces. The ovate and lenticular particles of the wheat starch help to clean even persistent pollution. On the other hand, the microcrystalline cellulose is not recommended for sensitive surfaces due to its rigid and sharp particles. The polyester fibers are new to the world of soft particle blasting and shows promising results when cleaning synthetic surfaces. A simple comparison can be made by treating a regular newspaper. While the arbocell can be applied to this paper from a short distance for quite a while, the wheat starch perforates the paper even after a short period of time. The air blaster is equipped with two chambers, allowing us to flexibly use two different particles. I recommend to use a funnel when filling the chambers. Make sure that the chambers are filled two-thirds at maximum. This ensures that the airflow can still swirl the particles inside the chambers. The air flows from the nozzle, picks up and swirls the particles, making it move through the outlet duct in the tube. Here we notice a blind spot where the particles have not been reached by the airflow. If you can see the octagonal air nozzle after opening the container, there are too few particles filled in. After filling, the pressure, depending on the individual object, should be set to 1.8 to 2.2 bar. The air blaster supports four different nozzles. The nozzles differ in diameter, which in turn defines the amount of particles blown through the nozzle. There is no rule on which type to use in what circumstance. Here again, the more experience you have with the device, the better you know how to operate it properly. The nozzles can easily be switched by turning the ring at the shaft. In order to use the hopper nozzle, the ring again must be unscrewed. Next, you screw the bolt on the back of the hand switch by using an Allen key. The synthetic tube can be pulled out and later removed when unscrewing the material rings from the tube. After this, you can now insert the hopper nozzle through the hand switch instead of the synthetic tube. Finally, fix the unit via the metal ring and tighten the nozzle by using the Allen key again. The object being processed can now be placed in the fume hoof and the cleansing may start. The hand switch should be ideally operated frequently as it cannot be held down constantly. The cellulose blasting particles are hydroscopic and need to be stored in a dry environment. Furthermore, the material should not remain in the air blaster after usage as humid blasting particles can clump. If this ever should be the case, please make sure to clean the tubes by blowing pure air through the nozzle. Furthermore, the top of the container could be opened in order to blow out the material from the tubes. Last, we can see an example of soft particle blasting with a portable suction arm. These can be placed flat in the air or behind the object itself. There will be an individual solution for every type of object.